Let's say you have the option of taking a pill that is going to give you mental health issues or another pill that will make you poor. Then you start buying NFTs. <laughs> you might have just taken both pills. I'm sorry if you're into NFTs, but maybe I'm just too old for it, but I've never really bought into the idea of NFTs. Why would you pay hundreds of thousands of dollars for a picture? I don't understand that. Well, hi everyone, what's going on? I am Carlos, I'm a normal guy, watching the markets and trying to make wealth for my family. This is a very quick update to analyze a little bit the fear and greed index. That could be good signs coming from this index. Again, it doesn't mean anything really, anything can happen, but looking at historical data, it could, be, it could suggest that we have brighter days ahead. In the end of the video, I'll also talk about Celsius. They've been paying off many of their loans, which is great news. So make sure to watch until the end. Smash the open like button. If you are not yet subscribed, subscribe to the channel and let's get started. Well, in spite of all the fear, all the latest news and all the very low price predictions that people have been making for Bitcoin and crypto in general, the market seems to be having a bit of a relief rally over the last 24 to 48 hours with many cryptos up uh, more than 5%. Bitcoin has been up 5.9% in the past 24 hours. The fear and greed index is still in the extreme fear region at 19, though better than last week when it reached a low of 10. This is the crypto fear and greed index over time. The chart says that when the market is in extreme fear for multiple days, it indicates that the market forms a bottom. You can see here in 2018, where back-to-back -back extreme fear in the market formed a bottom near $3,200 for BTC. Again, in March 2020, we saw a block of extreme fear and BTC formed a bottom near $3,800. In June, July 2021, a big block of extreme fear again, and BTC bounced from 28,000. And now in June, July 2022, we can see another big block of extreme fear. So could it suggest that we're going to reverse or at least bounce up a little bit? On a side note, if you need to move assets around, the Ethereum gas fee has hit its 20 month low amid market downturn. The average transaction fee on the Ethereum mainnet is currently just over $2, its lowest price since November 2020. That's really promising news, guys. Celsius has paid down $143 million in die loans since the 1st of July. Their liquidation price on its Bitcoin loan has now dropped just below $5,000. And yeah, BTC is on a downtrend, but I really would like to believe that BTC is not going to get to $5,000 anytime soon, if ever. So folks, that's great. Uh, why would a company keep paying off their debt if they were to go bankrupt? This can only be a good sign. To me, it doesn't change the fact that Machinsky or Celsius or someone from Celsius should, in my opinion, come publicly and talk to the community about what they've been doing, give hope. To the community because this radio silence is really not bad i've seen a lot of people in the comment section say oh they're paying the loans just be patient just be patient it's not fair in my opinion to just have this narrative of be patient and let them work they need to say something machinsky needs to say something he was very vocal he was always on social media and now he can't say anything at least come and say hi guys i've been advised to not say anything to not talk for the time being until things calm down but we're working hard Hung in there, I didn't abandon you, I did not jump off the boat. That's my opinion, okay? If you disagree with me, feel free to disagree. There was even a guy in the comment section saying, oh, what you're saying is going to be used against you. I'm not accusing anybody of anything. Yeah, I'm not making any false accusations. I'm just saying my opinion. And it might be the same as your opinion. Or you might have a different opinion. And in life, we need to learn to agree to disagree. With regards to the market, I, I personally feel that it is a dead cat bounce because of the macro uh, situation, the way that the US is increasing the interest rates, um, the way that there's so much inflation everywhere, issues in Argentina, uncertainty all over the globe, stock markets crashing, and uh, we're going to have, in my opinion, relief rallies. 
but I do not expect a V-shaped recovery. We, we could be moving sideways for a while, in my opinion, or we could go even lower, as many people are saying. Um, so, I mean, if you want to position yourself in the market, dollar cost averaging might be a good strategy, but do not go all in, yeah, because we could go a lot lower. Dollar cost averaging is a good strategy if you trust the assets that you're investing in, if you believe in their fundamentals, and I believe in the fundamentals of Bitcoin and some other crypto projects. Majority of them, though, unfortunately, probably will not last forever or might not even last this bear market. I need to throw in my disclaimer that none of what I say here is financial advice. I am just sharing my opinion and you can look at this content as educational content. Smash up the like button, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care. Bye-bye.